In this video, we are going to have a look at how to set up and conduct a reflux. Now, a reflux is a technique used where we supply energy in the form of heat to a chemical reaction. This allows the reaction to proceed at an accelerated rate. The reaction is usually conducted inside a round-bottomed flask, or RB flask for short. The reactant or reactants are dissolved in a suitable solvent inside the RB flask. A condenser is fitted on top of the RB flask. Looking closely at the condenser, we can see that it's a tube within a tube. We have an inner tube surrounded by an outer tube. The outer tube has two openings, one at the top and another at the bottom. We call these ports. We pass cold tap water in through the lower port, allowing the outer tube to fill up with the water, and then when filled, the water flows out of the upper port to the drain. As the solvent is heated and boiling is maintained, the boiling solvent vapours climb up the inner tube. The hot solvent vapours will condense on the cold inner tube and fall back down into the boiling liquid. In this way, boiling can be continued indefinitely without any loss of solvent because it's being recycled. So here we see Lauren adding the reactant to an RB flask, followed by a solvent. Quick mix and the reactant is now dissolved in the solvent. A boiling chip is added. This helps to prevent bumping once boiling occurs. And assembly of the reflux apparatus begins by securely clamping the reaction flask. If this is first clamped securely and vertically, the rest of the apparatus will be easier to fit together properly. A condenser is attached to the reaction flask, making sure of a good fit it also is clamped in position. The tubing from the top port of the condenser is directed toward the drain, and the bottom port is attached with tubing to the water supply. A wire gauze, supported by a ring, is placed directly underneath the reaction flask. The wire gauze will help to distribute the heat from a Bunsen burner. Before heat is applied, the water flow is started. And note that water from the faucet enters the lower port of the condenser, the outer jacket fills with water and the overflow runs to the drain. Cold water continuously running through the outer jacket of the condenser will keep it cool and once the reaction mixture is boiling will allow solvent vapours to condense. Here we're going to boil the reaction mixture by heating with a Bunsen flame. The solvent here is water, but if we are using a flammable solvent, we would be better to use another form of heating, one which doesn't involve the use of a naked flame. You should always be careful when using a Bunsen burner, tie back long hair, and be careful not to burn yourself. Once the solution starts to boil, the heat can be reduced by moderating the size of the Bunsen flame, and this is easily done by restricting the gas flow via the gas tap. Now looking closely, we can see the solvent vapours on the inside of the condenser turn back into liquid, in other words, condense, dropping back down into the continuously boiling reaction mixture. The reaction mixture is now being heated under reflux, and this can continue indefinitely, as long as the condenser is kept cold by the continuously flowing cold water, no solvent will be lost, it will be constantly recycled. When the reaction is complete, or when we decide to stop heating under reflux, we first discontinue heating by turning off the gas. When the reaction mixture is no longer boiling, the water flow can be stopped. And take care when disassembling the apparatus because parts of it will be very hot. Be sure to either wear heat protecting gloves or wait several minutes until the apparatus can be safely handled without getting yourself burned. So this completes the basic practical information on how to set up and perform a reflux. Pay close attention to the script in your lab manual and any directions given by your instructor, since there could easily be variations to the procedure dependent on which experiment you're doing. 
And for more instructional videos on techniques used in the chemistry lab, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel at Capilano U Chem Lab or get a full listing of our videos from our website at capuchem.ca/labs. And thanks for watching.